Awesome. Cool, cool. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this month, November's community event. Uh, I'm going to be your host today, Community Programs Manager here at Cyprus, Ronald Williams. Um, and today we're going to be um, leveling up Cyprus with a few of some Cyprus experts uh, that, I, that are near and dear to my heart. Uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Jonathan and Sean. Actually, I'd let them introduce themselves later. Um, really quickly, wanted to go over some housekeeping notes for you. Uh, first things first, uh, the events are recorded and they are going to be updated within 48 hours. So once this event is done, uh, you will re receive the email confirmation as well as see it on uh, YouTube for those that follow us there uh, that the event is uploaded. Um, the event is on YouTube for others to watch. So if you are logging in from YouTube, you will be able to see it there live. Um, also, the Q&A is now open, uh, so if you do have questions in there, we just ask that you keep those specific to Cypress Cloud, uh, uh, recently known as Dashboard, uh, so feel free to drop your questions in there in the chat, and the team will sort through those. You can also upvote your questions, so if there is a question that's similar to yours or that is extremely popular on your mind, uh, feel free to upvote that so we have more visibility on it. Um, next, if you have more questions about Cypress Dashboard, um, uh, also known as cloud, you can go ahead and log into Discord for those. And then lastly, just wanted to say thank you again for joining. I'm going to pass it over to Sean and Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you uh, so very much. Um, first of all, I want to thank every single person that is here today. Um, my name is Sean Harris. Um, I'm a senior uh, developer success engineer. Uh, that basically means that in addition to helping customers with their technical issues, um, I also get to collaborate with uh, Jonathan and his school team but also with the developer experience team to um, you know, kind of find really cool ways to um, share that Cypress knowledge with a junior developer. Um, and I will also let Jonathan introduce himself. Awesome, thank you, Sean. Uh, just for some historical context, I've been working with Sean for the better part of a year and a half now. Uh, I work in the customer success team. I've been here for, again, I guess the better part of a year and a half. Uh, I, I lead my team. I work with some of our largest accounts uh, that are using the Cypress dashboard. So I've seen all kinds of things. Uh, and so I'm super excited to be here today so we can kind of share some of our insights from working with customers for this long and working with users for this long around uh, different approaches you can use with Cypress and specifically using the Cypress dashboard to have a bit more velocity and to address flake and things like that. Absolutely. So uh, uh, plus one to that, first of all. Um, so I'm also super excited here because Jonathan and I working together, um, we get to provide two different perspectives, right? So I get to provide like the technical side, Jonathan gets to provide all the, uh, uh, the success, uh, customer success side of things. Um, and so the two of us today are going to provide like a, a, a high level demo of the Cypress app and the cloud up on the Nose dashboard. Um, don't be surprised if you hear us say dashboard a few times, but it is the cloud now. We will do our best to say cloud uh, throughout this presentation. Um, and the goal is, is to show you what Cypress can offer you, uh, regardless of whether you are literally like a individual dev or whether you are an enterprise level team of uh, developers. Um, so today we are going to cover um, an overview of Cypress. Um, that's going to include a demo of both the app and the cloud. Um, and then at the end, we will have some time for uh, Q&A, and then we will also provide you with a couple of uh, resources and docs. Awesome. Also, also, if you have any questions during this time along the way, uh, we're using Bevy. So what you can do is click that Q&A tab and start asking some questions in there. Uh, there are some folks from my team that are super high speed and have seen also quite a bit of things. So if you all have questions, ask them in there. Uh, they'll be handling those things in the chat. And if your questions are really good uh, and get upvoted, we'll actually handle those live, live here at the end of this call. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so I'm sure most of you are um, already familiar with the Cypress app itself. Uh, but for those who aren't, Jonathan, can you provide like a 10,000-foot view of Cypress? Yeah, absolutely. So um, essentially, Cypress is often taught, thought of as only an end-to-end -end testing framework, right? And that's absolutely where we started. But things have changed, right? We've recently launched component testing in 11, which just went full release in Cypress, Cypress 11. Um, and additionally, right? 
We uh, are able to handle things like front end unit tests, API tests, all matter of integration tests. So Cypress can do all of these things on its own. And when I say Cypress, I'm referring to the open source project itself. But what we also have is the Cypress cloud, right? And what the cloud allows us to do is take our testing experience to the next level. So where are all those test results going? More than likely they're going somewhere in CI. We need insights around those things. We need to know, you know how to stop flake. We need to know when to cancel runs when they're not being performant. And we need to be able to make informed decisions about the things that we're doing and what impacts they may have for us as we are moving through our development life cycle. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's about it, Sean, unless you want to cover anything else there. To be honest, my guy, I mean, you said a whole bunch of stuff, but at this point, uh, I'm a big fan of just diving in and seeing what's going on. Uh, so um, for the purpose of today's demo, uh, we're actually going to use the uh, Cypress Real World app. Um, that is our flagship, uh, flagship uh, demo uh, app, uh, and it's built by our developer experience team. Um, this In this app, you can find um, best practices and use cases, um, and it's a full stack of uh, Venmo style uh, payment application um, that's built with React and it's full of like uh, UI, API tests, all that jazz. Uh, so without further ado, um, it is demo time, right? So I will let Jonathan do his thing as soon as I start up this uh, Cypress here. Awesome. I have the real world app open here, so I had to make sure I've got it open. Awesome. And I, I do see some questions already coming in in the general chat, right, around uh, just how do I get started? Where do we go? Uh, as Sean said, the Cypress real world app is a full stack React based application that's publicly available. It has baked in Cypress best practices. But back to the task at hand, what you're seeing as of Cypress 10 is a whole new view for how you get started with testing if you're running things through the GUI. Right now, you have these two separate options between end-to-end -end testing and component testing. And depending on which door you click, you have a very similar yet somewhat different experience. Um, Sean, is there anything you want to dive into here before we move into end-to-end -end testing and looking at that? No, I just kind of want to reiterate that uh, as a Cypress 11, that a uh, nice beta tag that was on component testing uh, got to fall off there. so. Uh, just decided to see that go GA. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, just continue to move forward if you can. Sweet. So as usual, you can select between any of the browsers you currently have on your machine. Right now, what we're looking at in this view, uh, that's this is actually an updated view since 10.3. Uh, if you're logged into the dashboard and you're looking at the specs that you're currently running, all of a sudden you have a higher level insight into how those specs are performing in CI. Sean, are you actually on that Flake demo uh, branch? I am. Awesome, awesome, cool. I've never been so happy to talk about Flake before in my life, but can you actually uh, drag your cursor over uh, that flaky tag there on the left? Absolutely. Cool, so what you actually see is if you're logged into the dashboard, you can see insights from your runs in CI being piped into your Cypress app experience, right? So as Sean's hovering over this uh, flaky tag here, you can see that this auth.spec.ts file, right, is has a high level of severity. And what that means is, is that at the last 37 runs, it's been pretty flaky. Uh, when we're utilizing retries, right, in these runs, it has a high likelihood of failing and then passing. Um, so this has a high likelihood of also impacting our runs in CI and our users. If you scroll over to the right, you can see when this uh, particular spec file was updated. You can also see how it's been performing in recent runs on this branch, right? So we see that the last run that we saw here uh, that, we, that we issued is that there was a failure, that this is actually is no longer passing when we're running this particular spec file. And if you look even further to the right, you can see how long the spec file is taking to run in CI. Uh, a lot of questions that we get uh, on the success side is how can we be more performant? We're dealing with flake. If you start seeing a lot of flake and you're also seeing an average run duration start running up on these spec files, this is something to pay attention to, right? Sean, uh, did I miss anything here? Is there anything you wanna dive into? 
So I just want to clarify. So you're saying that as long as I am logged in here, right, I will have access to flaky badges. I will be able to see um, when it was updated. Um, I'll be able to see uh, this information here. Um, and I will also be able to uh, access runs here as well. So like you're telling me that I'm going to be able to see like all this stuff just by making sure that I'm on 10.3 and higher. That's 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 exactly it. Absolutely. Nice. Nice. Hey. Excellent. Um, hey, Jonathan. I also yeah. Yeah, Kevin. I'm sneaking in here. Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm with the customer success team. Uh, there's a question in the in in the Q and A that I think is applicable right now. Can you define flake for us uh, since we're we're talking about it? Cool. Thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for chiming in, Kevin. Um, Sean, uh, feel free if you want to let folks know how Cypress views and sees flake. Absolutely. So uh, we were actually going to cover that a little bit further in the uh, cloud uh, demo portion. But we can absolutely go ahead and cover that now. So Flake essentially means that when you run that test for the first time, um, on that very first attempt, that your test actually failed. And if you have subsequent attempts, meaning you've added retries to your configuration, it means that of those subsequent attempts, um, Cypress has then passed. So theoretically, if you have three additional attempts in there, so you have a four of four, um, and on those first two attempts, the, uh, the test fails, and then it passes on that third time, then that means that the test was flaky and has therefore technically passed. But if you didn't have those retries enabled, that would have been a big fat failure for you. Exactly. And like Sean shared, we're actually going to be diving that into that very subject much later in this uh, presentation, but always good to kind of uh, start demystifying things sooner than later. Sean? Absolutely. So I just also kind of wanted to point out here that uh, if I were using the um, if I were uh, logged into the app and I'm on the specs view here. Uh, so as you're talking about, about that uh, off spec uh, app, if you can see here, uh, it says it was last updated a year and five months ago. Uh, but if I were actually to go into this, um, this test here, and let's see if we can find that off spec. There we go. And if we were in here, so we were just to change this to secrets, right? that is going to update automatically. So you see how it went from a year and five months to a few seconds ago. And if I were to change that back, boom, it's going to update there again. Additionally, I just wanted to say that if you uh, click here um, or if you click in this runs, if you click on any of these, it is going to take you directly to the cloud, uh, which is exactly what we're going to talk about next. You got to love when you're uh, demoing here on the slides. So if we are using our uh, internal organization here, um, taking a look at the um, uh, at the, the landing page here, the first thing that you're going to see is that we have quite a few projects, right? So Cypress has 91 projects here. So I'm just going to use the search bar because I'm not going to take my time searching through all these projects. The cool thing is, is that um, after using the search bar, you're going to populate this uh, project um, uh, card here. And the first thing that you'll see is that this is public. So this real world app, um, this actually is a public uh, project. Anyone can view it even after this demo. You can go and check it out at any point in time. Um, and you can also see on the left side here that uh, this is uh, branch oriented. So you're going to have your default branch at the top and you're going to have a couple other branches. And then on the right side here, you're going to get a high level view of what your uh, tests have been doing over the last four runs. So you can see you've had a couple of failures um, and a pass there. But if you hover, you're going to get even more information, right? So you're going to see that it was last run seven days ago. Um, and you're also going to see the number of pass and failed and if there were any uh, skipped or canceled tests. And you're going to see all of that before you even click into the test. Now, I do just want to say that even before I get to um, this uh, section here. Um, Jonathan, do you want to highlight something that's new over here on the, the left side of our of our panel over here? Absolutely. So uh, you're hovering over it, of course. Uh, it's the branches tab. And that's something that uh, allows folks that are more managing a project, right, to be able to very quickly see, hey, uh, let's say the Flake demo was actually a feature branch and the team uh, was supposed to be delivered next week. What we'd see very clearly here by looking at this branches view is that, hey, that Flake demo branch has been struggling lately. So all of a sudden in my workflow, 
I've been able to improve how I have visibility and transparency into what these different branches are doing. And if you scroll down, Sean, you can actually see something else that's pretty cool. You can see uh, stale branches, right? So if there's a feature or a project that you had been working on and maybe you dropped it to take some other left turn, you can quickly start to really see how those previously active branches, what state they were in uh, when they were running last. It's actually a pretty cool feature. Sean? Nice, nice, excellent. Uh, so I'm just gonna uh, navigate back to the uh, latest runs tab here. This is what's gonna populate uh, whenever you first um, uh, click into an actual project. Um, so again, you're gonna have all of your uh, latest runs, branches, and analytics on the left side here, which Jonathan's gonna um, really dive into analytics a little bit later. But first, uh, from a support perspective, I'm just gonna kind of dive into all this information that is available to us on the latest runs. And by latest runs, we're referring to anything that was recorded to the cloud. So whether that was locally or whether that was in CI, anything that you pass that uh, dash dash record flag, all of that is gonna end up here. Um, so just uh, taking a look up here, we also have a couple of uh, filter options. So you can do all time, you can do status branch, um, even the committer, right? Like you can say, like, oh, if you only wanna see what you've run, boom, you've got uh, access to that information there. Um, for the sake of this demo, we're going to just um, filter out a couple of flaky tests. Um, again, no one's ever excited to see flake, but this is just helpful to provide more information. Um, and I want to find one here. Here's a good one right here. This one has 30 uh, flaky tests in it, right? So if I click onto this flaky test, there's a couple of bits of information that you're going to see uh, right off the bat here. Uh, the first thing that you're going to see at the top here is all of your git commit inf uh, information. So you're going to get to see that commit message. Uh, you're going to get to see like who the committer was, when it was run. Um, you get to see the, the branch name. Um, you get to also see if you're using CI, you get to see that uh, CI information. And then your specific run number, uh, which is indicative to your specific project, right? Um, on the right side here, you're going to get to see a summary. Uh, so it's going to be that brief overview, right? So you right off the bat know that roughly 95% of your tests passed, um, a little bit over 5% of your tests failed. Um, and then you have 30 flaky tests, uh, which is what roughly, you know, less than 10% of your tests. Um, and on the left side, this is where you get to see all of your errors that are most prominent for this particular um, test, for this particular run. So we can see here that uh, we got quite a few assertion errors. Um, the most popular of which being uh, timed out after retrying 4,000 milliseconds. Uh, so this particular one, it's saying like, hey, I was trying to find this particular element here and I never found it. Um, even, with re uh, even with retries enabled, you still didn't find it. Uh, so that's an excellent opportunity to kind of dive in there to uh, see what's going on here. Um, in addition to uh, this information here, I kind of want to highlight uh, a newer section that we have. So previously, um, whenever you uh, wanted to view your information, right, you have this overview tab, which provides the summary and your errors. And then you would have to go into the test results tab. And this provides everything, whether something passed, failed, canceled, was flaky, whatever, everything is in here. Um, but sometimes that can get a little bit noisy, especially when you have like a really big uh, you know, testing suite um, or you've just recently updated something. And that's what this uh, test for review section is really great for, right? So here you get to see anything that has failed, um, anything that was flaky, and also anything that was uh, recently modified, right? So um, broken up by the specs themselves. So like right here, we have the uh, notification spec. Um, down here, we also have like the transaction feed spec. Um, but we're just going to concentrate on this uh, notification spec. And we can see here that we uh, ran in five different groups. Uh, we can see that we ran over two different operating systems um, and that we also ran across three different browsers. Um, so Chrome, Firefox, and Electron in this case. And um, also these are only end-to-end -end tests. Um, and then if you wanted a little bit more granularity, right, we can actually click into this even further. Um, so again, getting kind of that, that combination of high level, but also um, more detail. So we can see out of the five groups that we had, the Electron Windows, that one did great, right? Pass, no problems. If we take a look at both of our uh, Chrome tests here, um, we can see that uh, these were actually flaky, which again, that means that um, on that first subsequent attempt, they did not pass. 
um, they failed. And so based on the number of retries that we had, um, it was able to pass. Um, and we have three retries enabled. So um, it, within one of those three attempts, um, it was able to pass. But if we take a look at the Firefox, both the um, the desktop and the mobile, which you know that means that it was changed uh, based off of the viewport, um, both of those failed outright. Um, so let's let's take a look into like why this fails and what additional information we can get from figuring out about this failure. So the first thing that we're going to see again is those attempts, right? So we're going to see that we had three attempts. It failed on all three attempts. And we're going to get to see what that specific error was. Um, again, that timed out after retrying 4,000 milliseconds um, and you never found it. We also get to see exactly uh, what line um, this happened in in your IDE. So we know that this happened on line 202 in your commands.ts. Um, and so that's where you would want to begin you know, your investigation. Um, additionally, if we take a look here at previous runs, um, this is where we can get kind of a great overview of the. Uh, so if you notice, we've got two lines here. And it says the first line is the flake demo. Um, and then the second line here is the develop branch, right? So if you look at the develop branch, it's doing great on the develop branch. It passed every single time. And if you look at the flake demo branch, you see about 50 50, right? Where you see some passes and some failures. But there's actually even more information here. If you actually hover over the ones with the circles around it, um, you can actually see that these were also flaky, which again, that means that it did not pass on the first attempt, but after subsequent attempts, it did pass. Um, so this, again, allows you to kind of say like, hey, everything's looking great on the, on the develop branch, but what is happening on this flake demo branch? If we look also at the uh, runtime environment, this is going to provide you more information that was also provided to you in the uh, test for review section. So you're going to be able to find out what the browser is, you know, what run group it's in, and then what operating system it's in. And in this case, it's Firefox, um, run groups, Firefox mobile, and uh, we're using Linux for our operating system. Um, so as a, as somebody who works in support, this, like this section right here, the artifact section, this is the first thing that I go to every single time. And the reason why is because when I don't have access to your system, I'm looking for these artifacts, right? So when I click on these screenshots, these screenshots are telling me what happened and where it happened. So it's telling me, it's just like I'm there using the same experience as using the app, right? I get the command log on the left, I get the uh, application under test on the right, and then I get to see exactly what that error is. And failed, you know, it was looking for a link uh, above one, but it got zero. So we got a, a nice juicy failure there, right? Um, and if we had video enabled, we would also see video here as well. Um, so having those screenshots, having that video enabled, and then, you know, you get some output logs here. That's a lot of information that allows us to help you debug when you can't figure it out yourself. Um, also looking at this, this test code history, right? So if we take a look at the test code history, you know, just oh, did something pass or did something fail. This says, hey, two years ago, two years ago, this test was doing uh, perfectly well. Um, and then something happened, uh, you know, around 11 months ago, two years ago, again, uh, where the uh, main branch that it was on has branched off to another branch. And now we've gone from passing tests to failing tests. Not only does it allow us to see when this was changed, it also allows us to see who changed this information um, and how often it was changed. So we can go to these developers and we can say, hey, Robert, hey, Emily, um, can you tell me a little bit about what we changed here? How can we adjust this um, so that we can get these tests passing again, right? Um, in addition to this, I also love the uh, failure rate and the flaky rate, but I don't think that you can look at one without looking at the other. So I personally like to open both of these at the same time. Um, and the reason why I like to open both of them at the same time is because um, I feel like they tell um, two sides of like the, the same story, you know? Um, so if you look at the failure rate, again, on that develop branch, you can see that um, it has a 0% failure rate. But on that flake demo branch, you can see that it has a 40% failure rate. And you don't only have to compare it to just the develop branch. You can really compare it to whatever you want. 
Um, it's just, you know, this, the develop branch for us is our default branch. So that's what we're comparing it to, but you can pick any of these branches. It doesn't, doesn't matter at all. Um, but again, that zero to 40, um, and it might be like, okay, well, 40% isn't terrible, but that means that 60% of the time it's passing, right? But if you look at your, your flaky rate, again, on this develop branch, not only is it passing every time, it is passing on the first time, every single time, right? But on this flake demo uh, branch, not only is it not passing on the first time, you've got quite a bit of flake here. So you're seeing where it had 40% flake, um, getting as high as, um, you know, 62% flake, um, and then going back down. But this lets us know that although technically it passed, you know, 60% of the time, it was also flaky a significant amount of that time. So that's one of those things where as a QA lead or as a uh, engineering manager, you may want to take that, you know, you may either want to just keep an eye on it. You may want to, um, you know, invest time, uh, develop um, but that would really, you know, depend on setup here. And it could be, um, you know, more than one thing. It could be uh, that, uh, you know, your, your, um, the test itself has uh, gotten outdated. Maybe you need to update the test. It could be that um, the feature itself has um, outpaced your test, or it could be a combination of the two. Um, but having this historical data is what's going to be able to really help you to understand, um, you know, what to look um, and where to begin. I also really, really, really love the performance uh, tab. And that's because, again, looking at this develop branch, develop branch is looking good, right? It's about seven seconds, you know, so you see four to five to seven seconds. But when you look at this uh, flake demo branch, you're seeing upwards of near 30 seconds for this same test to run. Um, so again, that kind of shows the difference between um, having enabling those retries and how that can, um, you know, begin to affect your performance. Um, and uh, last but certainly not least, um, we have the test definition. This is the second area that, uh, on the support side of things that I go to, because I want to see what was the goal of your test. What were you trying to test? What, you know, what was happening before the test, during the actual test, and then after the test. So you can see here for our test. We are doing some before each hooks. So we are um, uploading some code coverage. Uh, we are uh, it's like we're uh, seeding a database here. Um, got a couple of intercepts going here. And this is all before the actual test is even happening. And then we have the actual test, right, which is uh, testing some notifications here. But in addition to just those before and the, uh, the, the test body itself, we also get to see what's happening after the test. So any after each test, uh, any after each hooks or um, after all hooks or anything like that are all going to showcase here. And that gives us a, a, a great uh, story. So when you take all of this information, right? And you combine all of it into one, one big story, it gives you a great indicator of this test didn't just fail. How often did it fail? Um, how long has it been failing? Has the in, improved? And you can also take all that information and you can literally, in two clicks, you can scroll up here, in two clicks, you can take all this information and bundle it up. And if your team is using JIRA, you can actually create a uh, JIRA ticket right here from uh, the Cypress Cloud. So it's gonna get all the information for you. Uh, everything that was in that, uh, in that ticket, so that error, that dashboard link, all of that is going to go directly to your um, your your Jira instance. Um, Jonathan, did you have anything that you wanted to uh, add in here? Yeah, absolutely. If you want to scroll back down really quick, just to the test definition. Um, absolutely. This is something that I want to connect around because uh, you know when when Sean or I get tagged in to help users, customers figure out what's going wrong, and they're using a tool like the dashboard. Oftentimes we look at things like the test definition to understand what you're even trying to accomplish within your tests, right? So when you start having a source of truth, uh, a historical source of truth for how you're developing things, being able to have something, an artifact like this, that is easily understood by others, especially when you're trying to debug things in CI, right? It's important for us to be able to have this as an artifact to help you but it's also important for your team to have this as an artifact to align on. Because if I'm working on feature A, right, 
and uh, maybe I go on vacation and all my tests start failing, if I've written tests that aren't easy for others to understand and I'm not leaving uh, breadcrumbs as far as, uh, how can I say, comments and things like that in my code, I'm making it more difficult for others to understand what my tests are trying to accomplish. So it's really important to kind of align on what testing is and what the best practices are here um, because all of these things will help you have more velocity for your teams. Absolutely. Uh, team comments over here. Um, I love to see comments in the code, um, especially when I don't have access to everything or even your own teammates don't have access to everything. Um, so I'm all for making code uh, readable. Don't get me wrong. I love the, the one liners, um, but I also want to know like, you know, what's happening in there. Um, so I'd also like to take a little bit of time to um, kind of showcase uh, some of the other capabilities that you have uh, in Cypress. So um, again, right now we're in that overview tab, the test review tab, the test results tab is going to show you everything, you know, pass, fail, um, anything along those lines. But if you actually take a look in the uh, specs tab here, um, what you're going to see is that the, uh, in the specs tab, um, Cypress is actually able to utilize parallelization and it is exactly what it sounds like. So you are able to um, take your, um, your, your tests and run them across uh, several different virtual machines. Um, so if we take a look here, the first thing that I want you to notice is that like, here's our groups, right? So we had our API group, we have our UI Chrome group. Uh, but the second thing is that these are grouped on several different machines. So we ran nine specs across five different machines. So if we actually click into this, uh, Cypress is going to take the historical data of uh, the, the times that you've run uh, your test in the past. And it's actually going to make suggestions for you on um, as to how many machines uh, that they think that you should use using, um, again, that historical data. So as of right here, you can see that we're using uh, five machines, right? Um, so they're saying that's the current and the fastest. More machines does not always mean better performance. Um, in this case, uh, using more machines actually increases um, our, our projected time by uh, over 60%. And if we actually decrease the machine, um, the estimated time would double. Um, these are not something that you have to do. Uh, these are just recommendations. But I just wanted to uh, showcase that uh, parallelization um, align, uh, uh, also uh, combined with using the, um, the intelligent load balancing um, is how Cypress is able to help you save time. Um, and when I say intelligent load balancing, I'm talking about like in this example here. So you have um, seven specs across five different machines. And you can see on these first four machines, only one spec is run. And on this fifth machine here, there's actually three specs that are run. So Cypress doesn't say, I have a spec, let me just um, let me just divvy them up over five machines and whatever happens, happens. It says, historically, these three specs haven't really taken as long as these other specs. So let me just put them all here and run these as quickly as possible. Again, trying to uh, make sure that we uh, save you that time. Um, and so this, coupled along with our smart orchestration. Um, let's see, I want to get to the, all right. So um, this coupled along with our smart orchestration, um, you have the ability to um, run your failed specs first, also known as failure prioritization. Um, and you also have the ability to um, cancel run on the test failure. Um, so run fail specs first means that if your test failed previously and um, when you get ready to run it again, it's going to say, hey, that test failed last time. Let me prioritize running that test again uh, to see if it's going to fail sooner rather than failing later. Um, you can also have the ability to cancel run on test failure. Um, so as you can see here, you get to actually pick the threshold that you want. So um, we have ours set to one, um, even though it's not enabled at the moment. Uh, but uh, what would happen is, is that if said test failed, um, basically, it would just cancel the remainder of the run for you. Um, and yeah, I, in app, if I just change the view here, so right now we're looking at machines, but if I change this to this bar chart view, we can see here where the, the, we prioritize the failed spec. So that means that this spec, this spec here failed last time, and Cypress said, hey, that failed last time, let's run this first. 
But if you also uh, couple that with the cancel run on failure, what would have happened here is after this, uh, after we detected that this test failed, um, Cypress would have canceled the remainder of the run. And that will save you not only on, um, on your Cypress test, but that will also save you on uh, valuable CI minutes. And if there is any question regarding like, because um, I really want to like really dive into what I mean by like time saved here, right? So if we take a look here and we look at the, uh, the run duration, Again, this app that we're showing today, uh, we don't really actually test on this one very much. This one is main, mainly utilized for like um, testing when new features come out and things like that. And it's mainly for a demonstration. But if I actually took a look at one of our larger organizations, um, Cypress uses Cypress to test Cypress, right? And so in three months, we saved one year and six months. But Jonathan, when I say time saved, am I referring to like, oh, you save that time on your your virtual machines or am I referring to time saved on something else? Yeah, so absolutely. It is it is both your virtual machines and how much money you're spending in CI, which can become extremely expensive, but it's also developer time saved, right? So when you're able to speed up your runs with parallelization, what ends up actually happening, also again, like you've mentioned, Sean, if you're using things like smart orchestration, what ends up actually happening is that you're saving developer time. You're saving yourself from having to wait that 45 minutes, hour and a half. I've heard of users that have test suites that take two hours to run. So you're saving all that time from having to just wait around, wondering if things are gonna fail to, hey, this thing's now running in five minutes, 10 minutes. Now I've been able to kind of uh, unlock my superpowers so I can actually get to the things that I need to do versus I'm waiting for a run and I'm, you know, spending the next two hours uh, biting my fingernails, hoping things don't break. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I just kind of want to showcase again, this is over three months, right? This is uh, a year and six months. But if I were to actually filter this out to 12 months, Cypress literally saved over five years of developer time. I'm, I'm just going to let that like sink in for a minute. Like, do you know how many cool things we can come up with with the time save? You know, that that's that's a lot of cool things that we can come up with. I, I just I just want to let people it, know it, that. It's, it's possible that the cool things that we've come up with are actually coming out in the Cypress 12 launch where we're handling things like DOM detachment, mm. uh, multi-domain support, and also being yes. able to save your sessions across multiple spec files. So. That's what something like parallelization can unlock for your organization as well. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm definitely excited for uh, side 12. Like, I, I'm, I'm super excited for side 12. Um, that being said, um, I actually, because uh, I know I kind of like uh, touched into the, the analytics section here, but I actually wanted to uh, uh, let Jonathan drive here and really kind of dive into uh, more about the uh, analytics section, um, starting with the uh, run status area. Sure. Thanks, John. So what you're looking at here, right, uh, is overall run status. And right now we don't have any filters except for the last three months. Um, so that means we're looking at all the branches for all this period of time. So what Sean could do if she was interested, uh, you could go to that filter by branch and you could start selecting the things that you care about, right? And this could take a long time, potentially, depending on your sort of uh, branching strategy here. But what you could do that would be quite different is you could select tag instead. So with the dashboard, you're actually able to uh, pass tags at runtime while you're running Cypress. And then all of a sudden, instead of having to uh, manually select all of these different branches to find the things that you care about, you can actually just select a single tag that then shows you what you care about at a high level. If I'm running uh, tests in production because I'm trying to save money on monitoring, if I'm you know, uh, running smoke tests on staging, if I have a critical path uh, series of tests that are going out in specific run groups, if I have feature team A uh, and we're using something like selective testing to make sure that we're being very nimble in CI, I could easily pass a tag uh, to any of those types of runs and be able to see those analytics really quickly here at a glance. Um, 
Sean, if you could move to run duration. Absolutely. And we've we've already kind of uh, covered this. We're filtered to the tag, the local tag here, so we're not actually going to be seeing anything uh, that great. What you want to do uh, here is you actually want to be able to see how things are moving over time, right? As you can see, uh, let's actually scroll to uh, make this monthly instead on that view for the filter. If you scroll all the way up, and if you go to yeah, there you go. Um, what you can see here is that over the last three months, we've seen some minor fluctuation in overall runtime. Now, if this was a project where we had quite a bit of runs, we could see an even better picture by filtering to, or I guess altering the view to have a uh, smaller window, right? So if we start seeing our runtime go from 20 minutes, 15 minutes to an hour and a half, two hours, this is absolutely something we should be paying attention to because that sort of experience is definitely aligned uh, with Flake. And what you can see here in these cards underneath are the average run duration for that period of time and the typical concurrency. So how many machines we're typically running with for this period of time as well. Uh, if you could move to test suite size. Cool. So test suite size is another really great sort of uh, higher level analytic that lets us know that we're doing the work. And what I mean by that is if you are more, again, in that sort of lead managerial role, maybe you're a part of multiple projects or overseeing multiple projects, you want to be able to go to this analytic and see, hey, are we seeing movement here, right? Are we adding more test cases as we're introducing new features? Are we uh, refactoring test cases so we should see something moving down here? Um, essentially, you just want to be able to go to this tab and see that there is some fluctuation, that we are actively building and still putting time into our test suite. If you could move the to top failures. Top failures is great. Um, again, you can filter this by branch. You can filter this by tag. But here is a really great way to have, again, another really high level meta view, right? Um, if you click on something that's failing 95 to 100% of the time, if you click on the very right of that bar chart where it's red, I guess it's all red, <laughs> um, <laughs> and you scroll down, all of a sudden, right, we go from just this, hey, the most important thing to me is just debugging things in the moment and solving those issues to, hey, we actually have a much larger view of what's going on in our test suite. And these things are failing 95 to 100% of the time. It's time to address those, right? Because if we click that, if you click on, yeah, there you go, uh, any of those tests that are failing to that level, we automatically get this really great insight about what runs is these were occurring on. We can click on those runs if we want to. We can watch the videos. We can look at the snapshots. We scroll down, we can see the errors that are associated with this particular failure. If we're on a particular branch, we could then also see the test code history. And like Sean is pointing out earlier, the failure rate and the flaky rate compared to any other branch that we care about. Um, so this is really powerful. A lot of people on this call right now are super interested in flake, uh, super interested in how they can, you know, kind of better surmise what's going on in their test suite. And we're building up to that currently. Um, so let's look at slowest test. This is going to bring a lot of things together right now. So scroll up if you don't mind. And then uh, if you could go to three months again. There you go to the left. It's all the way to the left. All the way to the left. Yeah. There you are. Uh, yeah, if you do three months, cool. Actually, that's not helpful. Uh, can you do can you do one year? My apologies. We're just gonna look at all of them, but it's also the view I think that we're in right now because I think we're looking at this by the week. Sorry, we uh, oh. we got really weird with the filters here. Uh, go we did. On, right, reset the filters if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Let's let's just reset these filters here. <laughs> cool. Never mind. This is just the view that we're gonna be looking at today. So. With slowest tests, uh, what you're seeing here, right, is that uh, we have a breakdown. Uh, a lot of the tests that we're running in the Cypress Real World app are integration tests, though they are abnormally quick. They are super lightning fast. So 
we're getting not as much uh, high level insight as if we were running true end to end tests that we're testing multiple systems, right? We're mocking a lot of these things and using fixtures so that our tests run a lot faster. But what you would see here in a more sort of traditional approach to testing that may be more familiar to folks outside of our organization is, hey, our, our end to end tests are taking a minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes to run on their own. And so what I want to point out here on this analytic is that when you start seeing those sorts of things, those tests are directly related to performance issues in CI, right? They're also directly related to issues like Flake, right? If you look at this analytic and you see, hey, we have quite a few tests that are well outside this normal distribution we see with the rest of our tests, those would be really good candidates to kind of focus in on. Sean, do you have any thoughts here? Um, absolutely. Uh, so I agree 100%. Um, so I do know that, uh, you know, we're looking at some of these tests and, you know, they're saying that they're about four minutes long. Uh, so, you know, best practices is, is that, you know, you want to keep your tests around, you know, one minute or less here, right? Um, but the longer the test goes on, absolutely, like you definitely see those, those, because uh, Cypress is really heavily dependent upon the app itself. So uh, if your app is going to continue, continuously use RAM um, and you're, you know, parallel, uh, parallelizing across several machines, you're just unfortunately going to con continue to see that performance degrade. Um, and this, this, uh, this section of analytics is one of the main reasons why I really wanted to understand uh, the cloud more was because once I understood this, again, this is like section number three that I come to uh, when I'm looking to see uh, what problems you're having, especially regarding performance. Awesome. Awesome. And you're touching on so, so many other great things here. We're going to take a super quick look at most common errors and then look at flaky tests, which is always the star of the show, right? Absolutely. So, most common errors is another great uh, meta analytic that lets you know what your team is struggling with, right? What sort of errors we're encountering while, you know, uh, in our development process. So if you're seeing a lot of things like assertion, assertion errors and Cypress errors, for the most part, these are things that are easily addressable by us. Sean, if you scroll down real quick, please. Um, you can actually see that for any, if you can continue to scroll, for any, for any, uh, for any errors you see here, uh, the feedback is really great, right? We're letting you know, hey, this is what you weren't able to find. This is how many times it happened during the course of those runs. Additionally, if it's relevant, we'll also pass you docs here, right? We also want to make sure that if you encounter these errors, we also give you a way to look into addressing this in the future. Um, is there anything else we want to touch on around analytics before we uh, lightning quick hit flaky tests and move into questions? Uh, I just wanted to kind of call out here that uh, this is, so this flaky test error right here, uh, this is one that we created um, and we uh, decided to throw a new error that uh, basically like interpolated that it says flaky test. So I assure you, uh, as you can see, Cypress does give very detailed uh, 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 errors here. Uh, they don't just say flaky test, I assure you, just in case anyone was wondering. Some would say custom errors are a selling point. So yeah, I wish we would have <laughs> something really fun like, uh, you know, banana, banana, it's flaky. What do you what do you think? Um, anyway, so let's go. I'm for apples, but I'd, I'd be fine with bananas. That's fine. <laughs> That's fair. Let's uh, let's check out flaky tests together. Absolutely. So something Sh Sean spoke to earlier, right, is how Cypress sees flake. And this is something that I always want to double click on. Cypress can only see flake and understand flake uh, in a given run based on retries, right? If you have retries turned on, something both passes and fails, we're going to say, hey, that's flaky. Now, if I am committing code and all my tests fail. And then Sean uh, is on the same branch and maybe she adds a comment uh, or you know a line in a doc or something that doesn't change anything. And then all of those same tests pass. Cypress isn't going to be able to tell you that that's a flaky test or the spec is flaky. And it's because we don't have access to your source code, right? We don't have a way of knowing that, hey, nothing's actually changed. We're running the same tests there's flake here. Um, so before we kind of look at this analytic, I just kind of want to point out to some things that we've been covering throughout this entire time period, right? 
And it's how can we create even more breadcrumbs for us to be able to solve these sorts of problems? If you have a lot of flake going on in your test suite, are you testing your services, right? Are you only leveraging end-to-end -end tests, right? If you're only leveraging true end-to-end -end tests, and you're not using API tests, you're not using component tests, you're not using front-end unit tests, et cetera, you're missing out on all these other indicators that help you solve this mystery and help you save a lot of your valuable time. Um, high level, what we're looking at here is all the, t all the flaky tests in the last seven days. We created these arbitrarily. You can see that they all have low severity, which means that the likelihood of them impacting your CI pipeline as far as true outright failures or your users is very low. Now, if we were looking at this analytic and we saw a high severity of test cases was one or two or three or four, we'd start to feel a little worried. If you scroll down, Sean, what you can actually see is that in this analytic, Cypress is ordering these tests for you based on their severity. It just so happens all of these tests have the same amount of severity, but if something was a high severity flake, you would see that here. Sean, if you could click on any one of these. What you see here, right, is some really uh, information that can point you to the things that you care about, right? If there were more than more more than one run where this test was flaky, you would see that appear in latest flaky runs. If there was more than one common error that they were sharing, you would also see that there. If we were on a specific test branch, you could then see test code history, failure rate, flaky rate. And of course, at the very top, if you're using the JIRA integration, you can use all of this uh, really amazing information to help you create an issue right here and now. Uh, is there anything else we want to connect on before we start answering some of these questions, Sean? Uh, I just wanted to point out um, that um, that if you, so if you hover over here, this will let you know like what the severity is and how we determine what the severity is. Um, I know that when I first started, I was like, I don't understand like what makes something low versus medium versus high. So here you can see how we determine what's low, medium, and high. That zero to ten percent, you know, that means that it's low severity. It may not. It may just be something you want to keep your eye on. Whereas that medium and high severity, that may be something that you want to start uh, to, you know, uh, investigate and and put resources towards. Awesome. Cool, cool. Excellent. Did you have any questions in particular that you wanted to answer live? Uh, I think so. One second. I actually have it pulled up. Uh, Mahamud uh, or Mohammed uh, says, sorry, this is not completely relevant to the session, but I hope it gets looked into. Um, there are some issues uh, with Cypress 10.7 and it's kind of hard to upgrade. I just wanted to speak to this uh, clearly on this call. This is actively being looked into by our Firewatch team uh, and it's something that will be addressed. Uh, we changed the way that we handle some video, and this has been this has caused some uh, deprecation in performance for people upgraded from 10.7 to 10.8. Um, let's see, is there any other are there any other questions uh, that we want to answer here? Is there um, is there a way to see de detailed logs in CI other than video? Uh, I would say. For that one, um, there absolutely are many plugins and uh, I say approaches that you can take to gathering more of that information and saving those as artifacts for your run in CI. Mm -hmm. It just depends on what you're wanting to see. Um, so like Jonathan said, there are several plugins that are options to, uh, to see that um, and uh, that will allow you to see more of what it is that you're wanting to see. Awesome. Uh, it, it looks like uh, Kevin and Brittany, who have been answering these questions, have just been knocking them out of the park. Yeah, like I thought, yeah, we'd just... real, I thought we'd have some real juicy ones to answer. I was very wrong. Sean, if you want to continue to drive and uh, like wrap it up or bring up the presentation, I think I think we're good. Absolutely, absolutely. So. Uh, j uh, b before we do that, uh, sorry to, to jump in. Um, I do want to say there are, there are still some outstanding questions that we may not get full time to get to. If you have questions that didn't get answered, I really yeah. recommend you go over to our discord channel and ask there. There's a lot of great folks.
uh, answering yep. questions. So uh, if you want to follow up on those or anything like that, go to the Discord. Great, great community there. Thank, Thanks, thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, so yeah, um, again, yeah, absolutely about to, to hit that again. Uh, so uh, just a quick recap, Cypress. Uh, Cypress app is an all-in-one uh, testing framework um, that allows you to quickly write uh, reliable end-to-end -end and component testing. Um, the cloud houses all of your uh, testing results, um, which gives you space to share those results across your teams and analyze test data. Um, and those two, to, uh, those two tools work together to create a seamless testing experience for your team um, and reliable user experience. Um, we are gonna provide you some general resources and docs that will be available to you, uh, not only in Discord, but also in the, um, the YouTube uh, description itself. Um, and then some commonly asked questions were, um, uh, is this event recorded? Absolutely, it is recorded and it will be shared to all uh, email uh, registrants. Um, the Cypress Discord, as Kevin mentioned, um, we welcome all questions over in the Discord. So please like join us in the Discord. That will be a great opportunity. Jonathan and I will be there answering a few questions after this. Um, and then the future events, um, you can visit uh, community.cypress.io to see uh, future events as well. And then I'll let Jonathan handle the uh, additional support there. Awesome. Yeah, so like Kevin pointed out and Sean just said, we're just gonna keep saying, join the Discord. Join the Discord. Uh, there are Cypress ambassadors, Cypress engineers, uh, folks that have been developing the Safari WebKit, uh, Safari WebKit support that we have in Experimental right now. They're all there answering questions and engaging with people for absolutely free. We love engaging with the community. And additionally, what I would add is that if you do look into uh, the dashboard subscription service, you have folks just like Kevin. He's so helpful. He's jumped on multiple times to make sure that we are in track and online. Uh, he's actually the one hosting our internal office hours that we provide, I guess I should say external office hours, that we provide for customers uh, on, on these different plans. So if you have questions and you're currently engaging with us right now and you also have a subscription, get in Discord. Let us know uh, what's going on there, but also know that we are actively developing resources to better assist you all in your overall adoption journey. Um, and of course, uh, feel free to join our GitHub Cypress uh, discussions where there are multiple conversations happening around things exactly like, uh, you know, this DOM detachment work. Uh, how can I say, what else? This DOM detachment work, uh, Safari WebKit stuff, Cypress Studio came back and is super awesome. Um, so yeah, there's so many different ways to engage with us. We look forward to continue to help the community in any ways that we can. And like Sean said, Sean and I both will be in our Discord following this community event, answering all sorts of questions for you all based on our experience. Absolutely. Uh, so thank you all so very much. Uh, I will turn it over to Ronald um, and we look forward to seeing you all at the next event. Yes, just to reiterate, thank you everybody for attending today. I hope you had a good time and we will see you in Discord. Uh, Till next time.